It's like a showdown between Burden, a uh, Burden, Biden, and Bernie. Burden, <laughs> by knee, by knee. We'll put them together. Two grumpy old men. You know what they're arguing about for the next debate? That will be just a one-on-one. -on -one. They're the only ones left. They broke the rules again. The DNC is terrified of Tulsi Gabbard. They just don't want her anywhere within a million miles of a, a debate stage. So they broke the rules. She qualified to be in a debate because she got two delegates from American Samoa. Uh, maybe it's one. All I know is that she qualified, and they said, whoops, we're changing the rules again. <laughs> They just want they just want Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders on the stage. I swear to you, I'm not making this up. I promise you, they're arguing about the fact that Biden wants to sit down and Bernie wants to stay. <laughs> and of course, Biden wants to sit down. The poor guy's tired. He's just getting he's getting revved up, and he hadn't even dealt with Trump yet. I've, I've been watching the uh, the Hillary documentary on Hulu. Everybody's talking about it. And I went in knowing it's going to be very slanted um, in favor of Hillary Rodham Clinton. It's still a very fascinating documentary. Say whatever you want about her. She is a complicated, um, very famous, um, polarizing woman. And has quite a story, got quite a life story. She speaks candidly about the Monica Lewinsky thing. Bill Clinton does, too. Oh, boy, does Bill Clinton look old. Boy, we're all getting old. <laughs> I just, I can't believe it. He, but he looks like a, a, an old, just an old man. Um, and he's interviewed, and he gets very, it looked a little emotional. He, he owns the Monica Lewinsky stuff and what he did wrong and said he was ashamed of it and had to tell his daughter and the whole thing. But... Something that my I've, I've I've watched three episodes. They're all about an hour each, and one of the big takeaways is this: that her aides were admitting because they had cameras going throughout the campaign, and so you get these very candid views and behind the scenes, let your hair down kind of view of the candidate Hillary Rodham Clinton. Her aides said on camera, "It is impossible to compete with the." theatricality of Donald Trump. They just didn't know how to battle him. She tried to get back at him and tried to insult him, and that doesn't work. Nothing worked against him. And it was, you know, that Jennifer uh, Palmieri, I think is her name, and there were like two or three that were are quoted pretty extensively. Uh, these are her top aides, her chief of staff and her personal assistant and the campaign director, and they're all like, there's nothing that works against Donald Trump that the media loves him, the press eats it up, and you can't compete with the theatrics of a guy like Trump. Joe Biden is going to have the same problem. If Joe Biden is the nominee, it's going to be very difficult for him to, well, out-Trump Trump. Here's a little bit of uh, Hillary's documentary. Man, it was, I didn't realize how much contempt that she had for Bernie Sanders. She is no fan of Senator Sanders. Cut number two. This is part of this Hulu documentary um, where she talked about how Bernie Sanders has been a, a do-nothing, ineffective political figure for many, many years. You know, th there is a, there's a kernel of truth in something she said. Well, there's a lot of truth in what she says. I'm just kind of amused that, that there's this battle between Hillary and Bernie. But one of the, the amusing things to me is how Bernie has successfully painted himself as this outsider. He's as Washington, he's as Washington insider as you get. This guy's been a politician for decades and decades. What is it, 30, 40 years? He's gotten a government paycheck as a as a as a uh, as an elected representative. You think that's an outsider? Trump's an outsider, literally. Bernie Sanders is as inside the beltway as it gets. Something Hillary pointed out. Here's cut two from Hulu and Grabian. Bernie just drove me crazy. He was in Congress for years, years. He had one senator support him. Nobody likes him. Nobody wants to work with him. He got nothing done. 
he was a career politician. He had he did not work till he was like 41, and then he got elected to something. It was all just baloney, and I feel so bad that you know people got sucked into it. Ouch. That's going to leave a mark. Meanwhile, speaking of Democrats, these clowns have absolutely no shame when it comes to politicizing the coronavirus scare. And let's face it, there's a, there is a panic, there is a concern, there is a big fear. Stock market having a bad day today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average plummeting, the S&P 500 down. We got the oil wars going on with Saudi Arabia, but there's also lots of concern. A friend of mine was telling me about an event um, in Atlanta, it's something called uh, the oh, it's the food industry logistics show. Somebody who is there says there is virtually nobody there. Nobody is attending the big food. Uh, it's described as the greatest supply chain show on earth. It's a uh, a big show. It's called Modex. It's the go-to show for companies in the manufacturing and supply chain industry. Um, they've had thirty thousand people before. I'm told literally nobody is there, just the exhibitors all sitting there looking at each other. Flights are being canceled. Um, lots of decisions are being made. And instead of being unified as Americans, they certainly know how to try to politicize this and weaponize it. Listen to Jackie Spire, Congresswoman from California. She was on MSNBC last night. And... Uh, <laughs> Just a high, just unbelievable what these people are capable, how low they're capable of going. Look, check this out. Cut number four from MSNBC. This is Congresswoman Jackie Spire, a Democrat. The fact that he is not willing to cancel his uh, various rallies uh, suggests that he is willing to place even his most ardent supporters at risk because we're supposed to stay six feet away from other persons in order to mitigate uh, the exchange of those viruses. Uh, I think that he is showing, unfortunately, why he is so ill-prepared to guide our country during this time of crisis. Do you notice what wasn't said in that ridiculous assertion? She didn't say anything about Bernie Sanders or Joe Biden canceling their rallies, nor did the MSNBC interview. What about the Democrats, Congresswoman Spar? Oh, no, that's different. They can have their rallies, They because that'll hurt them if they don't have rallies. And let's face it, this will impact campaigning if there are no rallies. Here's Rahm Emanuel on ABC. He was on uh, with uh, this week. Listen to this, cut number six, acknowledging that Trump is going to have a big problem if he can't have his rallies. You're going to have a point within about two months where you cannot have big events together. If you look at presidential history, Franklin Roosevelt used to drive out in the country to get out. President Bush, 41, was on a speedboat. The Bush and Ronald Reagan would cut, obviously go to their ranches. He is not going to be able to have his rallies. And it is going to psychologically, the office is isolating enough. And his inability to get the admiration, the adulation from that crowd is going to psychologically torment him. And his isolation is going to get more intense, and his tweets are going to get more vicious. You, you notice, it, hear him getting revved up? Hear how excited Rahm Emanuel gets? Let's find the, uh, the famous Rahm Emanuel quote, Eric, from the archives. Because he's just practicing what he preaches. You never let a crisis go to waste. He doesn't say one word about a Biden rally. He doesn't say one word about a Bernie Sanders rally. What about Bernie Sanders not getting to have rallies? Because if you don't want Trump to have his rallies, uh, Rom, you sure can't expect the Democrats to have rallies. Or, or can they? Or can they? Or can they? You never want or a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. Now, this isn't anything new to them trying to stop Trump. That's all they do. And now they're going to use coronavirus as a, as a way to try to weaponize sick people and concern that people have. And if you don't think panic has set in, go look for a bottle of hand sanitizer. I was telling the team today I was going to buy one of the – I have a couple of those phone soaps. It's really cool. It's a neat device. It's an electronic device. You put your phone in it. They've done all kinds of testing. 99.9% .9 of the germs are, are wiped out off of your phone. And the phone is a bad place to collect, you know, junk, you know, germs. They're on back order till like May or June right now. 
<laughs> I went on their website last night because I was going to buy one for uh, Pavlina and Eric and uh, and Derek and Lance. You can't get them. You can't get any uh, hand sanitizer. There is true panic that is set in. And the president, incidentally, said we're going to have the rallies. We're going to. We're not. We're not slowing down. Here's what the president tweeted today, and this is why he's going to be criticized because. First, he was criticized for not for, for overreacting. Now he's being criticized for underreacting. But here is a tweet from an hour or so ago. The president said, so last year, 37,000 Americans died from the common flu. It averages between 27 and 70,000 per year. Nothing is shut down. Life and the economy goes on. At this moment, there are 546 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 22 deaths. Think about that. And he's got a good point. 22 deaths compared to between 27 and 70,000 deaths from the flu. We got the great Charlie Kirk coming up this hour. Uh, can't wait to talk to Char Charlie from Turning Point USA. He's got a new book out. I want to get his take on the CPAC controversy. He was at CPAC, uh, even though I was in the hotel room sick with the flu. I saw a tweet from Catherine, who's a big fan of the show over the weekend. She said, see, it was providential that you got sick. I didn't have to go to CPAC, Mike. Well, I didn't like it one bit. 